Welcome to the Chronicles, told by the Oracle. Cases of the missing, murdered, and unsolved. I'd like to thank everyone for joining me today, and all source information for today's episode can be found in the description box below. Be sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss a case. Let's get started with Chronicle number 39, the James Adamski case. Let's journey back to the year 1982. Michael Jackson released his Thriller album. While some were jiving to his beat, others were getting physical with Olivia Newton-John's song. The age of the computer was among us with the release of the Commodore 64. And Time magazine revealing the man of the year was no man at all. It was the computer. If all that is a little too much, why not head out to the movies to catch the latest showing of E.T., Tootsie, or perhaps Tron? While 1982 was full of new and exciting things, one family would have a Halloween that would change their lives forever. James Adamski was born on July 18, 1964, to Bernard and Rosemary. James had two brothers, Larry and Andy, and one sister, Susan. Andy was ten years younger than his big brother, James, but he looked up to him so much. James would often watch his little brother, and Andy remembers riding on the handlebars of James's bike as they went on rides. The family would reside at 12 View Court in Depew, New York. James loved art, bowling, and was very popular at Depew High and was looking forward to graduation as he was a senior. By all accounts, he was an all-American teen. On October 30th, 1982, James and his friends caught word there was going to be a Halloween party at a local dive bar called Five and Twenty-Three. James would dress in his Halloween costume. Some accounts say he was dressed as an American gigolo, and others say he dressed as Alice Cooper that night. His friends would arrive to pick him up for a night of fun and drinking. Andy remembers James kissing him on the forehead and telling him to have fun trick-or-treating before he headed out the door. It would be the last time he would see his older brother, and the last Halloween he would celebrate. James and his friends arrived at the bar. That night they were hosting a special, one price got you in and all you could drink. It should be noted that the drinking age at this time in New York was 18 years old. James was drinking, dancing, and having a great time. At some point, James's friends would leave without him. It is unclear as to why this happened. A while later, James would exit the bar to walk a short distance home after his fun night out with friends. James was not walking alone, however. A young lady had left the bar around the same time as James had. It is reported she and James walked together until she got to the intersection of transit and Broadway and the pair parted ways. This was thought to be the last person to see James. However, a police officer would come forward and state that he saw and talked James at the same intersection that James and the young lady had departed from. There are no reports that I could find that stated if the officer talked to James while the young lady was still with him or if it was after she had already walked away. We have to assume James was coherent and capable of making it home that night, as the officer did not arrest him for public intoxication. After talking to the officer, the officer reported that James went on his way, walking in the direction he had been, presumably on his way home. James, however, would not make it home. When Rosemary woke the next morning to find her son had not come home, she knew something was terribly wrong. James was a very respectful young man to everyone, but he was especially respectful to his parents. He would always let them know what his plans were and where he would be, for James to not come home was very out of character for him. Rosemary would call the police and make a report no parent should ever have to make, a missing persons report on her son. The police would search for James and came up with no sign of him. They conducted interviews and found out that James had an argument with some people at the bar. Could the people whom he argued with have done something to James? The police were unsure. In fact, they had no idea where James had gone. It was not likely he had run away, as he was a good kid with a great home life, and he had an even wonderful school life. 
So where had he gone? His parents and siblings wanted to know. The police wanted to speak to some men who had left the bar that night. It is unclear if they were ever able to do so. Were these men the one he had an argument with, or were they possibly witnesses to the argument? Was it an argument that had led to the brutal murder of an 18-year-old young man with his whole life ahead of him? It is possible, but it is something unknown to police or the public. On December 26, 1982, almost two months after James vanished, he would be found by rabbit hunters in Lancaster, New York, in a shallow grave covered with leaves and freshly broken twigs. James was still in his Halloween costume. It should be noted that early articles in this case state James was only partially clothed when he was discovered. His body would be found just off Ransom Road. The rabbit hunters found his body as they thought the pile was home to a rabbit's nest. When they looked, their discovery was far worse than they could imagine. On James's body was a ring, scarf, and necklace that were all determined to be his. The medical examiner would perform an autopsy and reveal the cause of death to be multiple blunt force trauma to the head. James had been hit more than a dozen times in the forehead and side of the head, it was stated. James was found four miles from where he was last seen. The area where he was found, police believe someone knew where they were going, as it was not a place non-locals would have known to go. It was an underdeveloped area at the time, and there was a train track located nearby. The police would send the freshly broken twigs off for analysis. However, nothing was recovered. The police would not go into details surrounding what was found near his body. Who had done this to a son, brother, and friend? The family was devastated. Rose Marie would become very protective of Andy as he was the youngest, just eight years old at the time. He was not allowed to take the school bus to school or stay outside and play late with the other kids. Andy believes his mom was afraid whoever had done this to James was going to come and do the same to him. Andy was heartbroken. He had lost the big brother he looked up to and loved. He wanted to be just like James. Andy would hate Halloween after this. Not only was an innocent 18-year-old's life taken, the innocence of childhood and memories of Halloween was gone too. Bernard would pass away in 2000 and Rosemarie in 2005. Both left this world not knowing who killed their son or why. In 2016, the police would send James clothing to a lab for DNA analysis. If anything was found, nothing was disclosed to the public, and I could find no more on this. In 2017, Lancaster Police Department and the Erie County District Attorney's Office would put up a $10,000 reward. Crime Stoppers would add an additional $1,000, totaling 11000 for someone to come forward. They would only receive two tips, and both went nowhere. Could this have been a crime of opportunity? Perhaps someone saw James walking alone and drunk and took advantage of this situation, and as a result killed him. This is plausible. Some believe it could have been someone James knew. They believe his body being hidden is an indication of this, as the location would have been hard for someone who did not live in the area to find. Could the argument in the bar have played a factor in his death? The police do not believe so, as they have stated a simple argument would not have led to a beating, as it was thought he could have been hit in the head with a 2 by 4 a tire iron, or a baseball bat. The murder weapon has never been determined or found. The police have also said whatever transpired that night happened between Broadway and Como Park Boulevard. As it was said, he left the bar at 3.30 a.m. After interviewing hundreds and clearing the young lady who was walking with James, the police are no closer today to solving James's case than they were in 1982. The lives of the Edminskys changed, and although James's parents are deceased, his siblings want justice and to know who took the life of a young man who had a bright future. If you have any information, please call the Lancaster Police Department at 716-683-2800, extension 137, or Crime Stoppers Buffalo at 716-867-8181. I want to thank everyone for joining me again, and don't forget to hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe so I can continue helping families of the missing 
murdered, and unsolved. As always, this is the Oracle, signing off.